Hey everybody, Chris here. Welcome back to another episode of Steel Soldiers TV. Today I'm working on the M756A2. I've got a bad stoplight switch and I'm going to swap that out tonight to get the brake lights working again. It uh, went on on me several months ago. This truck is currently not on the road. I've been uh, running it back and forth a couple of times to just to exercise it, keep the engine going, but uh, we're getting ready to do a major cosmetic restoration. Uh, the mechanical systems are in good shape. It runs, stops, starts, everything's just fine there, but uh, we've got to do a bunch of rust repair and sheet metal swap and everything else. So I'm going to be detailing all of the work on this truck in upcoming episodes. But tonight we're going to knock out this stoplight switch. I've got to go uh, get some tires mounted on it next week and kind of make sure the brake lights work. Don't want anybody running up the rear end of this thing. So let me show you exactly what we're getting into. So here she is, the 1969 Kaiser Jeep M756A2 pipeline maintenance truck. There aren't too many of these trucks left on the road. This one's special to me because my dad bought it years ago with the intention of fixing it up and using it and uh, just never got around to completing the project. And so now I've taken over the project and I'm going to see this thing through. I've ordered a takeoff cab and you'll see why here in just a minute. Uh, fenders and some other parts, and then I've got to do a bunch of work to the pipeline bed itself. But the cab is just rotten. The previous unit that had it uh, was based out of Fort Drum, New York, I believe, or somewhere close to Bouts. And obviously, horrible winters up there, lots of salt on the road. This was a Navy truck. I'm pretty sure it went swimming a few times. So lots and lots of rust in this truck, and they just bondoed over it and slapped some more paint on it and just kept on going. But this whole lower rocker is rotten, all made out of Bondo and paint. And you can see the tool chest on the bed itself has suffered mightily. I'm gonna have to completely remove that and fabricate a new one. All the stake pockets are shot. They just took some real thin, looks like galvanized stuff and bent it and looks like they caulked it in place. I mean, just. You know, whatever they could do to keep it cosmetically acceptable, I guess, during inspection. Uh, but you can see behind this, it's just shot. So I'm going to have to get my local steel shop to bend up some stake pockets for me so I can go ahead and replace all of those. A little bit of rest, rust in the structure of the bed, uh, but it's, it's in pretty good shape overall. The whole thing needs sandblasted and painted. Uh, you can see where in the rails it's rusted through. Because there's a lip on the bottom here, any mud or salt or anything would have laid up uh, on that lip and just sat and sat and held the moisture there and rusted through. So some of these places I'm going to have to cut out and, and weld in some heavy metal because obviously with the pipeline truck you're anchoring uh, the gin poles to the bed in places and you're pulling off the side of the bed in places. So we've got to make sure that it's structurally sound. This is the worst part and I think it's just from the wheels throwing you know, mud and everything up into this cavity back here because it's just packed with mud. And obviously the rust has gotten really bad here. So I'm gonna have to cut this whole piece of channel out, take this uh, gen pole support off, probably even take this gen pole clamp off. And you can see these were just welded onto this channel. So I'll cut this channel out and weld in a new piece, reinforce it from the back with some fish plates weld it up all nice and solid. Because again, this is where your chains go to hold gen, gen, uh, gen poles up in the air. So you obviously don't want any structural weakness right here. That could be uh, bad news when you get some weight on the crane. Uh, let's see, the rear winch is uh, missing. My dad has that over at his house. So I've got to go get that and reinstall that. I think the headache rack has to come off for that. So that ought to be fun. But just a lot of work, again, horrible rust in the rockers and the windshield is shot I mean totally rusted out of course you know got moss growing on it <laughs> so, but it's uh, the inner and outer frames are just totally shot so uh, like I said I'm getting a takeoff cab and fenders from Memphis equipment and they are going to pack everything up on a pallet and send that up to me along with the steps because both of these are shot and they're going to send me a set of air tanks as well because they've got a lot of rust in them and actually one of them started leaking where the strap goes around the tank so 
I know they're starting to get a little thin. So they're gonna pack all that stuff up and ship it up to me. And I'm gonna do a total cab swap rather than try to repair all the rust. So that's the truck. Let's slide underneath here and take a look at what we're working on this evening. All right, so here's the back of our air pack. And as you can see, the skid plate is already off of it. Somebody removed that at some point and it is laying in the uh, cab under the driver's seat. So I'm not sure when that was taken off, but uh, at some point they removed that. But everything is really in pretty good shape. It, like I said, it uh, runs and stops just fine. Uh, all the brakes seem to be in good working order. Everything seems to be adjusted well. So other than the stoplight switch, seems to be in great shape. So let's see if we can get this uh, wire unplugged here. That'll be the next step. There we go. Not bad. Connection looks clean. Actually looks like somebody put a little uh, dielectric grease on there the last time they put it together. Pretty sure that was me. So now we can see our uh, sensor here. This thing is fairly uh, rusty. Hopefully down in this adapter, it's not too bad. Hopefully they put it in there with Teflon tape. And uh, that's gonna keep it from uh, seizing to the back of our uh, air pack here. It looks like this adapter has been worked on before with some, with a pipe wrench. You can see some teeth marks in that thing. So I think somebody's worked on this before probably trying to take out the stoplight switch and the adapter spun with it. So we may want to grab a wrench ourselves and back that up if this thing starts wanting to, to come out there. But overall, it seems to be in pretty good shape. A little, uh, little rust on the brake lines, but I mean, just surface stuff. So it doesn't seem to be too bad. This pack looks newer. Get, you know, judging by the, uh, the paint, who knows how old it is really, but definitely looks to have been replaced at some point. Looks like they uh, have done some upkeep, at least to uh, the mechanicals. Body, not so much. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything together, ready to go, because I'm gonna have to hot swap this thing. I'll have to take this one out, stick my finger over it, and thread the new one in to keep from losing too much brake fluid. Got our brake fluid uh, inspection door open here. Before I pull the plug on that thing, so to speak, down below, I'm gonna make sure that our master cylinder is topped off. So I'll take the lid off the, uh, off the master cylinder there and see if we can figure out uh, if this thing's low at all. I'm just gonna take our vent line loose there. So let's get some tools and check on that first. All right, I finally got it loose. The uh, vent line was a real joy. You only have room to uh, turn it one flat at a time with a 3 8 wrench. So, uh, so that's a joy. And you got the uh, spring over there fighting you, everything else. So uh, yeah, so that was a blast. But I got the cap off and checked it and it was a little bit low. So you can see the master cylinder, cylinder down there with the uh, top of it off. So I just topped it off. And for the deuce and a half, you're gonna use silicone brake fluid. And it's classified as dot five. You can't mix dot three and dot five. That's a big no-no, totally different kind of fluid. And it even says on your inspection cover there, caution, add silicone brake fluid only. So when you go to Napa or wherever, make sure that you get the silicone brake fluid dot five rated. The other stuff will not mix well and you'll end up with a huge mess. So anyways, got that topped off. I'm gonna go ahead and get my sensor ready. Got it down here on the toolbox. And this is an exact replacement of the one that's in there. So it's got this anodized steel base and it's got the same exact socket. So real easy to uh, swap these things out. Uh, this one, the one that's in there, looks like it's been in there for a long time. So uh, they don't fail too often. Again, you could swap them out to the, uh, the air style, air operated style versus the fluid pressure style if you want to. But uh, I got this one cheap, so, uh, and it was NOS. 
So I'm gonna use it this time. And if it goes out again, then yeah, I'll probably swap it over. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply some Teflon tape to the threads, give it a couple of turns there, and then we'll be ready to uh, try to back the old one out and get this new one installed, hopefully without too, losing too much brake fluid down my arm in the process. All right, so I managed to hot swap it without anything running all over the place. I got a little bit down the arm, but not too bad. Had a paper towel to catch it. There's the old one. Pretty crusty. Hard telling how old that thing is. But it's pretty crusty. So I'm just uh, tightening this one up. Just using my trusty crescent wrench here and snugging it up. Teflon tape on there, you don't have to uh, man it up in there. But you want it snug. The other one was tightened up right against the adapter. All right, here we go. So we bottomed out on the uh, pipe thread adapter there. Now we're ready to plug in our socket. And let's see if I can figure out which way the pins are going. Should go in just like that. Already got some dielectric grease on there. There we go. Make sure that's all the way up in there. Make sure the rubber comes down around the plug. That's what makes the seal there. Yeah, we're bottomed out on the pins. That looks good. All right, very good. Well, that wasn't too bad. So now I'm gonna run up to uh, the top there and just double check the uh, master cylinder. I just barely lost a dribble when I swap that thing out. So should not be an issue at all. Well, I got uh, the tools out. See if I can go ahead and replace the skid plate. Uh, I hope they saved the hardware. I did see one bolt up in there. So I hope they saved the hardware so I can go ahead and put that thing back on there. If not, I'm gonna have to go root around in the uh, hardware bin and see if I can find something that'll work. All right, so there you have it. Not a bad project for an afternoon or an evening. I only cracked my head on the bottom of the door once. You know, I even told myself, you know, make sure you close the door when you go into the truck so when you back up out of there, you don't hit your stupid head on there. And what did I do? Cram! As soon as I was coming out of there. The hat took some of the blow, but uh, still got a little blood coming out of there. So, hey, it's the price you pay for working on old iron. So, great uh, project here for the channel. Hope you guys uh, got a little bit of an understanding of what's involved in replacing a brake stoplight switch. At some point, if I do switch over to the air-operated one, I'll be sure to do a video on that as well so you guys can uh, get an idea of what's involved in making that conversion. I'm going to go ahead and button everything back up, get the lid back on the master cylinder, put the vent line back on, and I'll go ahead and give it a test drive here and make sure my stoplights are working again. Hopefully everything's going to be up to snuff. Next up, i got to figure out why my turn signals quit working. Hopefully it's just a bad ground on the flasher. Otherwise, i got a new flasher module I can swap in. Lots of projects upcoming. You guys keep tuning back in. I'm going to cover the full restoration of this M756A2 here on Steel Soldiers TV. So we'll see you guys again real soon. Take care.